You did. Exactly. <laughs> By the way, I answered. I'm feeling a little bit, uh, a little bit slighted. No, that is the whole point, though. The whole point, and this goes back to Deanne's point. I'll never know truly if that were a true random spike. I've, I've eliminated almost every other variable except for Max's use of data in that month. So that doesn't mean there's something else I missed that I wasn't looking for, right? Started with the modem, check the lock on it. Okay, it's not that. Let's check everything else. My data usage, song transfers, downloads in the app store, all the same. Have you talked to about it in front of Max or to Max about it? We've talked, we've talked to him about usage since then, yes. That was, that, was a, that was a bit of a shock for us. Like, okay, let's start variable. taking this out. If he knows something, if, you know, then he might be changing his behavior. What I'm going to start doing is putting math problems as the password for him to download stuff. Yeah. So I'm going to work on his math skills and work on making him be responsible about how he downloads. 12 times tables, here we go, buddy. 12 times 162. Let's go. You know those crossword puzzle things for scratches, right? No. <laughs> I, 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 I can do like crossword puzzles like scratches. My little brother was learning to spell. Oh, he knows those. And he like he got it. Yeah, it was insane. I guarantee there's a free app that's a lot cheaper. <laughs> well, but the yeah, point yeah, is, yeah, if you make like, learning fun, as Harrison is, if, if you make learning fun, it becomes a little bit more pleasant to do. I mean, that's the other day we were sitting outside and we decided to melt some ice in a in a pan of water to see how much water there is in snow. We put a bunch of snow in a pot of water and melted it down, stuff the roller in before and after. I'm like, oh my god, it shrunk by, I think it shrunk by 80%. And he was like totally into that. I could tell him that. I could tell him that a foot of snow is like an inch of water. Or we could actually do it, make it active, make it fun. That's the whole point, really. So, so tonight throw out boiling water. No, I've seen that. People get burned with that stuff. Cool, it? it is cool, but I, why? Here's a question. Have you seen this? No. Throw no. boiling water in sub freezing, right. and apparently it, it, it makes it. Why does why you drop it off the second floor down? But, but, but nobody does that. I keep seeing YouTube videos people burn their faces off How because they sh just right. go up to your second floor and drop it out. Let gravity be your friend. Yeah, I want to do that. Do that. Very bad tonight, actually. Or you put it on the water again. Harrison. Harrison. Harrison's over there. Yes, sorry. Okay. It works. Well, I'm not saying it doesn't. I think it works too well in some cases. <laughs> For the YouTube videos I've seen. But, it, but I do it's want to do that. <laughs> I'm very interested in science. That's not like Darwinism. It's not like bad luck. Which is part of Darwinism. There's a fine line between people doing science. Between badass and science? Yeah, people doing it in the name of science and people doing it in the name of they don't know what the hell All right. Well, I'll do it. If I'm not back on Monday, you know what happened to me. Right. Breast cancer rates. We're back in the breast cancer article. Um, I left the, the pages somewhere. In here. here they are if you need them. We've got the data sheet here, and we've got the slides here if you need them. We've got a stapler here if you need that too. So when we were when we left on Monday, we were taking a look at breast cancer correlated with green tea consumption. Poor green tea consumption correlated with breast cancer rates. Okay. What was the conclusion of the study? What was the conclusion of the study? That people in cultures that drink lots of green tea have a lower rate of breast cancer. But nice, nicely said to Kate, because what you didn't say was green tea lowers breast cancer rates. What you did say was in this study, there's a test of association, or there's an associative result that occurs in cultures that consume a lot of green tea with amount of green tea consumed and a apparent lower breast cancer rate. Very nice, very nice, very nice, very nice. Control group, experimental group. I forget how the control group was established in this one. I forget if they, they were denied green tea or if they were just given black tea. I, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly. So here's, here's the deal. Here's what you're looking at. Here's a p-value that's very small. So this is essentially the same thing as that spike that happened in December on our, on our cable bill, except going the other way, low instead of high. So what you're expecting to happen when you start the study is, why would green tea have any effect on breast cancer rates? Why would you even think that? Now you have to remember, oh, go on, go ahead. Antioxidants. But the thing is, before, before all those studies were done, you're right, you're right, that's what's been tied to it now. But go back 150 years, before anybody even knew what an antioxidant was, let alone that it was tied to green tea, let alone it was tied to breast cancer. Why would anybody think that green tea would be tied to lower breast cancer rates? And the idea is, you don't. You start noticing these things, when you start looking at the data, you start noticing the things in the data. So that's when the studies arise. That, and that's when you start studying things like antioxidants, polyphenols, and all those wonderful things in the teas. Yes. But that's kind of the part that this course steals away from us a little bit, is that wonderment of why. Why would we ask the question? But the question has been asked. 
And then we go into the study thinking, ah, we'll just try, you know, we'll, we'll try green tea, we'll try jolt, we'll try full throttle, we'll try uh, vodka Red Bull, we'll try tap water from five different countries, five different locales, New York City, Bend, Oregon, Wilmington, Delaware, we'll try them all. We'll try every single one of them, and we'll see if any of them have an effect on breast cancer rates. And it turns out, I'm making this up of course, none of them do, but all of a sudden, boom, it looks like there's a tie with green tea. Is it possible that instead of doing that, that maybe if people who are researching cancers and different things like that look at different populations and go, but That's what happened here. This particular, why don't... That's what happened. Did you hear how Kate described... This is going, I wonder if this causes cancer... Well, right, but the only way to isolate or that... Or is to compare it to other things that might be like it except for the variable of green tea. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, they didn't do that in this study. They, they compared this to a control group. Basically, medical doctors were sitting around talking about cancer, and they were like, hey, anybody notice breast cancer is low in China? How come? And exactly. How are they different? Well, they've got a more fish-based diet than red meat-based diet, for number one. They eat a lot of rice. Okay, they eat a lot of brown rice or white rice compared to, and there's all kinds of little variables. Here's the here's one variable tested. I'm not saying this precludes or disproves anything else. They have higher cancer rates for other things, though, than That's what the U.S. does. Well, but, but again, this right. But this study is about breast cancer. And yeah, we're better than China, Dan. What are you talking about? Okay, relax. No. <laughs> relax. Green tea, breast cancer. Okay, I'm not trying to prove that cancer goes away when you drink tea. Green tea, breast cancer, Asian populations. Settle down. Okay. So here's the actual breast cancer rate in the general population. Now, when you develop a sample around what you believe that breast cancer rate to be, your sample average should be close to the population average, but you have to slap a margin of error on it to, to truly capture the parameter. So now you've got this 95% confidence interval, 95% confidence interval around which your true, in the population's breast cancer rate lies. But then you collect back, you collect back the data from your sample that drank green tea, and where did they land? In the unexpected. They landed over here somewhere. And then you scratch your head, you go, holy crap, why did they land down there? Let's do it again. There's two, good, hopefully, yes, and this, this kind of study has been done over and over again. But what are the two explanations for why they landed down here? There are two explanations. Outlier or their own curve. Did you hear that? Say it again nice and loud, Kate. The, it was either an outlier or it, that point belonged to a different bell curve altogether. Let's make sure we understand what, thank you for that. Let's make sure we understand what both of those things mean, because they are the two possibilities. When it lands that unusual, you sit back and you go, well, that, that statistician would go, we've proved breast cancer lowers, or, uh, green tea lowers breast cancer, breast cancer rates. That's terrible statistics, because it is possible that we landed down there and these people that are drinking green tea have the exact same or no different breast cancer rate than the general population. And they just so happen to land in that tail. It can happen randomly. It can happen randomly. Or there could have been an experimental flaw. Let's, let's, let's rule that out for now. Hopefully we've taken care of that. So it can happen randomly. Or, what was the second thing you said? That data point might belong on a different bell curve altogether. Yes, and what you have to start doing now is looking at the probabilities. What's the probability that these people have the exact same breast cancer rate as the general population, but landed way the hell down here? Renee, you're looking at the answer. What's the probability that they have this breast cancer rate, but they landed way, way down here? That's what that tells you. Take a look at it in words. Take a look at it in words. The chance that you actually got ridiculously lowered breast cancer rates. What you did in your sample, you did. You got ridiculously lowered breast cancer rates. What's the chance that that is tied to the belief that green tea has no effect? Well, that doesn't appear to be tied at all, does it? It appears that this part is actually contradicting this part. This is saying green tea should not be associated with lower breast cancer rates. But your data comes back showing that green tea is associated with lower breast cancer rates. That's your contradiction. How does your contradiction show itself? With an extraordinarily small probability. There's almost no chance that if green tea has no association with lowering breast cancer rates, that it should have come back showing that it does have an association. Go ahead, Kate, please. So when you, what's this, the first experiment or study ever done on that. Mm -hmm. if, they, mm -hmm. if they get that data point, Good. are they going to first think about it as an outlier or are they, or, or they, and then do another study 
or are they going to sit back and actually think, well, maybe this is a different bell curve? I love that question. That's that's at the heart of the rest of this class. Okay. You just asked, it's a, it's asked two, but maybe even four questions. Well, actually, you asked two because of the result. One of two things is going on here. Number one, this could be what's called a false positive. Crying wolf, if you will. Start drinking green tea! It's associated with lower rates of breast cancer. You could be wrong. You could be wrong with that, with that report. Or you could be right, which would mean that you've, you've caught a change. You've caught a change in the population. When a study first comes out, you have to look at, let's go back to that deck of cards example you mentioned earlier, how they're going to show the deck of cards. Isn't it possible? Because we assumed that cards was fair in the beginning, and I dealt five black cards off. Boom, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Assuming the deck is fair, that's possible, right? But is it likely or probable? No, not in the first five. Is it, is it likely that if I keep doing that experiment, at some point I'm going to get five black cards that pop out, even if the deck were fair? Yes, but how likely is it on the first trial, the first experiment? That's what statisticians have to do. They go, oh, let's put the results out. That might spur another research institute to replicate it. Then suppose their results come back unusual. Then the first institute goes, whoo, it looks like we didn't get a fluky random result because the chance of both of our results being fluky random essentially is going away to zero now. Is that fair? Does that make sense? Rather than making a claim, you know, oh, green tea lowers breast cancer rate. You put it out there. Or they just put it out there as a put it out. Found it? Yes, okay. because the articles will never say green tea lowers breast cancer. The newspaper will. Look at the title of this article. Look at the title of what it is. It doesn't say green tea lowers breast cancer. It says a study of the effects of blah, blah, blah. It's, it's wordy and academic, as it should be. Because okay. it's not trying to prove anything. It's just saying, here, we found this. Here, take it, go do something. Like it's, 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 it's basically, it's an invitation. Go replicate this if you want to. Good, fantastic question. And it begs to the scientific method. Replication. Replication and reinforcement of a result like this one. Oh, it's such a good question. Thank you, thank you. But yes, there always are two options. You could be right or you could be wrong. When you, when it, when you say, you look at that number, you say, God, it's tiny. So then you ask the question, does it appear that green tea is associated? What do you think? Does it appear that it's associated? With breast cancer. Not with, with, cancer with, with lower rates of cancer. Oh, sorry. Let me, thank you. Let me fix that. Thank you. Lower rates of breast cancer. Thank you. Very good point. Let's save that bad boy. Okay. So when it says giving green tea a no effect on lower cancer, that's because you're trying to disprove what you want to say? Yes. Yes. You go into the study going, you know what? It's easier for me, Dan, if I may back up one slide. Thank you for that awesome question. If I may back up one slide. <laughs> where the hell is it? Where was it? There it is. It's very easy to build this curve around an already established value. Now, in this particular study, most likely this curve is built around the sample of the control groups, the sample average of the control group, which is going to be good, which is essentially within a margin of error of the cancer rate of the general population. And that's easily checked, easily checked. You basically build a confidence number around that control group. You check it with the assumed 9%, 10% infection rate in the general population. Oh, it's in the interval. All is well. Nothing changed. But here's the interval. And then... We lay it out here. So that's why it's really easy to build this curve. It's hard to build an alternative hypothesis curve. This is your null hypothesis curve, which is the belief that what we're studying has no effect. We'll come back to that alternative curve briefly. I'm thinking Monday of next week, because that's where it gets tricky. I'm going to show it to you here, but there's a little bit of arbit arbitrariness with where I put it. Watch this. So looking at this picture again, chances are the data point that you collected from your research was not an, an outlier. You don't assume that as soon as you get a data point, you get an outlier. Okay, this re-answers your question too. When you get a data point back from your research study, assume that you follow the protocols, you collected your data well, as random as you, if you can be, as you expect it to be. When you get a data point back, you don't assume it's an outlier. You assume it's near normal. So in other words, when you get this far away from that curve, it's getting harder and harder to believe it's on this curve. It's getting harder and harder to believe. It's getting harder and harder for you to believe that deck is fair when you keep seeing black cards coming out of it. Every card that comes out, every card that comes out, every study, every individual in the study that keeps showing lower breast cancer, it gets harder and harder and harder to believe that this curve is true. 
Can you envision what curve this guy should belong to? Where should he be? What do you think? Renee, what do you think? Where, where should he be? She be. Where should, where should it be? Essentially close to this on an average. So you should be seeing, let's skip over the next slide, just look at that one. You should see something like that, yes. This guy, which is going to be an outlier on the non Greek tea drinkers, good, good. It's going to be closer to the mean of some other curve. Now, I'm not going to say it's on that mean of the other curve. That's basically 0% chance of happening. But it's going to be within margins of error of some other curve. If it's outside of the margin of error of the null curve, stands to reason to believe it should be within a margin of error of some other curve, in this case, a lowered curve. Now, good, good. The, the answer to Deanne's question, this was a fantastic question, that's the null curve I don't want to build off the beginning in my, in my study. Because I don't know where that center is. That's the problem. I don't know what this value is. I do know what this is. Because breast cancer has been studied for years and years and years and decades and decades and decades. So I've got a trend in society of where this should be. And my control group will mirror that. But if you're doing a study, especially for the first time, and you get weird non-null results and it lands way over here, you can't assume that that's your new center. You can assume that that's close to a new center and you start building a new curve off of that. Because it's just a sample. Good. And you don't know anything about that new population, if it even is a new population. It looks like it is. It looks like there's a secondary population. The secondary population is the green tea drinkers' breast cancer rates. They, it looks like they have a different rate of breast cancer association than the, than the non-green tea drinkers. Have we proven anything? Of course not. We've shown a correlation beyond a reasonable doubt, though. Just like in court. In court, you never prove anybody's innocent or guilty. You give evidence, 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 and eventually you reach a point where you're like, you know what? I got, I got to assume this person's not guilty because you haven't proven anything. Or in this case, if you will, this is actually the pro a proving of guilt. Guilt is a, a relative term. You've proven guilt because you've proven you can't be over here. You should be somewhere else. I'm using guilt not in the bad sense, but just in the in the opposite of innocent sense. So here's the no: innocent until proven otherwise. Well, it doesn't look like we're on that curve. It looks like we're on some other curve. The question is, where is that other curve centered? We'll come back to that. That's a much, much trickier question. We have to start looking at what's called a type 2 error in power. But we'll get into that in a couple weeks. Right now, oh, it's, it's very, very cool. False, like, false negatives. If we're looking at the SIDS, that might be there. But good, the good. mean might be way over there. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So that was the, you got it. That was the prosecution's erroneous false argument. They said, here's the likelihood of the normal population, and Sally Clark was way down here. The problem was they built that curve erroneously. Good. Very good connection. Very good connection. Eh? And this is where I can't go with Max and the, and the cable bill right now. Because I don't know if I have enough data points to actually build that curve. And if I can, it's going to be so freaking wide and squashed that it's going to be meaningless. So I need more data to tighten it up a little bit, get a better look. Good? Let's take five. You look like you're worn out a little bit. Yes. Come back to this. Yes. They are five. They are five. Good. Good connections. We're going to ask me that question. Okay. No. Nope. Okay. No, no, yes. Okay. We'll think about it.